You want to learn about some critical reading questions? Stay tuned. This is Randy Bartlett from City of Bridges, and here we are for week three of our Cobb Talks. I'm really excited. Uh, Arlen Hess is joining us today to teach us about uh, some critical reading questions using the Adler and Van Dorn critical reading model. Uh, make sure to check out City Books down below. Arlen has 17 years of experience teaching literature and composition and is here to share some wisdom and learning with us. I'm going to be introducing you to six critical reading questions that will help you read with more intention and give you a better understanding of complex texts in a relatively short period of time. It uh, is adapted from the work of uh, two researchers. Uh, one's named Mortimer Adler and the other one is Charles Van Doren. Uh, so it's an adaptation of the Adler and Van Doren critical reading model, which I've used in the classroom and I still use it myself uh, when I'm trying to wrap my mind around uh, a book that I'm getting ready to review. And I've shared it with students over the years and it's super helpful in a variety of ways. Uh, it works for written text, verbal texts, visual text with only a little bit of tweaking. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give you the six questions first and then we're going to apply them to a really simple text, The Three Little Pigs. Okay, first question is what kind of story is it or what kind of text is it? You can be objective here and just give things factual, fiction, nonfiction, poetry, it could be a science text, it could be an accounting text, it could be uh, a news program that you've watched. Uh, it could be a painting you're looking at. Okay, second question. What does the title mean? Sometimes things aren't titled in a way that reflects what the text means. Um, sometimes they are. Three Little Pigs reflects what's going on. Okay, what are the main parts of the text and how do they relate to the whole? Anytime you break down something into its parts. You talk about how they relate to one another. You're getting at the heart of analysis and that's really important. Fourth question, uh, what are the questions that the author or the creator is writing to solve or what quest or what problems is the writer writing to solve? So questions writing to answer or problems to solve. So let's say for example, it's, uh, it's an article about um, solving homelessness or finding uh, a vaccine for the coronavirus. Um, that would be a problem. Uh, okay, what are the words and phrases and what do they mean in context? Because a virus, you know, two years ago didn't mean the same thing that a virus means today. Or if we're talking about Three Little Pigs, straw means something very different in the context of Three Little Pigs than it does, you know, in my backyard. Okay, and then the last question, which you will often see, if you see these questions elsewhere, you'll see this higher up in the list. But um, the last question is, what is the main point of the text? And I like to keep that at the end of the questions because oftentimes if the text is more complicated than I, can wrap my mind around at first. I don't go back and answer that question until the end because doing all of this works give me, gives me a much better sense of what, they, uh, uh, of what the main point is. Okay, so let's start with Three Little Pigs. Now everyone's gonna know a different version of this story and that's okay. What kind of story is it? Well, it's a children's story. It's short. It's meant to teach something, so it's like a parable. Um, it's funny, arguably, because there are animals talking. It's probably a little harsh because one of the animals dies at the end in the big pot of water. Um, you might find it stupid. You might find it confusing. Um, you can put those subjective kinds of comments in this section um, because it's especially important if you have to write about it later. If you don't think it's a good story or you don't like the painting, you can say why in that section. Okay, what does the title mean? Well, Three Little Pigs is rather reflective of what's going on in the story. The words three little and pigs may take on a different meaning in the context 
Little doesn't necessarily mean small. It could mean young or immature, especially if it's a big bad wolf, you wanna have little in contrast to big. So um, you wanna play with the different words of the text. Don't just take it at face value. Three, what are the main parts of the text and how are they organized into a whole? Well, something like Three Little Pigs, and this is why I chose it to talk about, uh, lends itself to three main parts in the middle anyway, because we have three different pigs and three different things are happening in the story. Sometimes it's harder to find the shift in parts, but if you are familiar with the five paragraph essay or something that has uh, an introduction, three main body parts, and then a conclusion, we're seeing that reflected in the story of the three little pigs. The mother sends the children out to make their way in the world. We have the three middle parts about how they try and fail, try and fail, and then succeed. And then the conclusion is when they are able to overpower the big bad wolf. That's analysis. Okay, question number four. What questions is the author writing to answer or what problems is the author trying to solve? So this is where you can make your own study guide. If you can come up with the questions, you know the answers, you've just read the text or you're looking at the text or you've heard the text, you know the answers. What would somebody have to ask for the creator of that text to come up with these answers? Okay, so what did the first pig make his house out of? Straw. Second pig, wood. See, these can be really kind of kind of easy. Uh, what happens to the big bad wolf at the end of the story? The more questions you can put here, the better. If this is a if this is something about how do we solve an economic crisis brought about by a pandemic, um, we're going to have other problems to solve, and of course then under the section, what are the main parts and how they're organized into the whole, that's gonna blow up. It might be a lot of different parts, a lot of different parts and how do they relate? But you can always break it down into its basic sections and then see how they relate to one another and that's gonna help you break it down. And you can use a pencil while you're writing if you need to. Don't be afraid to write in the margins. Okay, what are the words and phrases and what do they mean in context? Well, straw, wood, brick, house, pig, big bed wolf. Okay, kind of common. Um, if it starts with once upon a time and it ends with and they live happily ever after, we learn that this is something that didn't really happen. This is fictitious. It takes us to a land far, far away. It's a lot easier to get over the horror of what happens to the wolf at the end when we know that it could never have really happened. Um, let me in, let me in. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Again, repeated words and phrases, we hear them over and over again. And they're kind of funny because they rhyme a little bit. But it's what they mean in context uh, is that matters here. And then at the very end, we could say, what is the main point of this story? Well, it could be that with teamwork and patience, even the weakest of children can overcome the cruelty of a bully. Now there are many different possibilities here. You could talk about construction. If you, uh, if you uh, approach a problem uh, with all of your materials that you need the first time, you might not have failure along the way. So you can see that having broken it down and talked about the main parts and the questions and the problems, we could use all of the different elements of the story to draw a different conclusion. And those conclusions are going to be valid because there's evidence in the story to support it. So this is where we get the idea of critical reading, the idea of where we get uh, strong analysis and well-supported documented main points. So the Adler and Van Doren, Van Doren critical reading model, six questions. What kind of text is it? What does the title mean? What are the main parts and how are they organized into a whole? What questions is the author writing to answer? Or what problems is the author writing to solve? 
what are the important words and phrases, and what do they mean in context, and what is the main point. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch. I would be happy to talk about this with you. Um, I hope it works. Try it uh, with a variety of different things and you will see it will change the way you approach reading. Good luck. I enjoyed learning from Arlen as an educator, a reader, and a human being. I sure did. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this third week of our Cobb Talks. If you have things you want to learn about or things you want to share, leave us a comment down below. Please subscribe and check out our work. Uh, and please take a trip over to City Books and see what they're up to also. See you next week.